Hey guys, this is Brownie Boy TV here with your LBA Game of the Week. This matchup is going to be between the Jabal Relicans, whose coach is Nasser or Nazri, and the LA Nero Kings, whose coach is JJD Hernandez or Joey. Um, as you can see, this is a new layout provi uh, provided to us by Vertilate, who is now a member of the league. Uh, and it shows the 10 Pokemon on each of the two teams' rosters. Uh, for the Jabal Relicans, we have Exploud, Rotom Heat, Crocodile, Amoongus, Halucha, Zapdos, Politoed, Kingdra, his Mega is Mega Scizor, and his MVP so far is Sitmonchan. And for the Alienado Kings, we have Alakazam, Tyranitar, Zapdos, Metagross, Ferrothorn, Forges, Infernape, Latias, Mega Ga uh, Garchomp as his Mega, and his MVP so far is Regular Gyarados. Uh, so as you can see, both teams have a Zapdos, and that's because this is actually a cross-division matchup. The Jabarelicans are competing in the Omega Division, and the Alienado Kings are competing in the Alpha Division. Uh, both these two are just incredible battlers and they both run really strange sets I'd say. Uh, more so for Nasser, he runs really really cool sets like against me he brought a uh, Damp Rock Among Us with Rain Dance so it'll be cool to see how these two uh, match uh, bring their teams. So the sixth Pokemon that they're bringing is Joey's bringing Ferrothorn, Florges, Alakazam, Gyarados, Mega Garchomp, and Tyranitar while Nasser's bringing Mega Scizor, Hitmonchan, Kingdra, Crocodile, Politoed, and Among Us. Uh, so, that's going to be it for the team preview, and we can get into this as Nasser sending to the challenge. Uh, so Nasser decides to lead with his Amoongus, while Joey decides to lead with his Ferrothorn. Uh, from a spectator standpoint, it's not an ideal matchup, but uh, Nasser actually has a trick up his sleeve because he likes to run a hidden power fire Amoongus, so that's great for him as he's able to do a considerable amount of damage to this Ferrothorn right off the, uh, right off turn one, and he gets a crit, which also helps. Uh, Joey just decides to lay down some spikes because he probably assumed that uh, Moongus wouldn't be able to do anything to him at all, so he decides to swap out and Nasser immediately makes a really good prediction as he uh, decides to go for Spore when Joey decides to bring in his Tyranitar. So that's obviously a great uh, prediction because Spore wouldn't have an effect on Ferrothorn and he predicted him to go out to his Tyranitar. Uh, and based upon team preview it, looks, it looked like Tyranitar would be his special wall in this case, so I'd say that was a really good prediction by uh, Nasser. So right here, uh, since Tyranitar's asleep, Joey decides he doesn't want to leave him in there and let this Among Us do whatever he wants to do with it. So he swaps out into his Alakazam while uh, Nasser decides to swap out to his Scizor. And his Scizor is a Mega Scizor, obviously, because that's what he drafted. Uh, so Scizor gets hurt by the spikes upon entrance, and uh, Joey doesn't want to sacrifice his uh, Alakazam right away. So he swaps out again, and he goes out into his Intimidate Gyarados, which is going to uh, lower the damage that this Mega Scizor is able to do. But I'm not sure if Nasser was able to predict this really or what he was, uh, his thought process was before this turn, but he just decides to just go for a U-turn so he gets some more uh, switch initiative and he's really just got control of the match so far in my opinion. Uh, so right here he decides to U-turn out into his Crocodile and his Crocodile is able to get off and intimidate on the Gyarados. Now the Gyarados, who was brought in to essentially just intimidate the Mega Scizor, uh, just got intimidated now he's down to negative one and he's going to get buffeted by the sandstorm but he reveals that he's actually a leftover set so he's most likely going to be a bulky mega gyarados and he doesn't like this matchup because i think that he's assuming that this crocodile is scarfed or maybe banded or anything and he's just going to swap out expecting the rock slide and he swaps out to ferrothorn which is a pretty good prediction for him because it's actually uh nasser actually does decide to go for the rock slide here and that's not going to do anything to this ferrothorn so nasser obviously i think that he's a uh, choice in this battle but i'm not sure at this point but I'm pretty positive he was. So he decides to swap out and he goes into his Politoed. And his Politoed's going to get rid of that sand as he uh, initiates his drizzle. And uh, Joey's just going to go for Leech Seed here on this Politoed. So he's going to go for Leech Seed. He's going to get some health back because he isn't uh, leftovers, which we saw earlier. I'm pretty sure that he's just Rocky Helmet because that's what people usually run if they're not going to be leftovers on Ferrothorn. And so Nasser decides to go for a Scald. It's rain boosted and he gets a burn. So that really helped him. And Joey decides to go for a power whip, but he misses, so that's really going to hurt. Because the power whip would have done a considerable amount of damage, even though he's burnt, just because Politoed isn't really that physically bulky. And Ferrothorn actually has a surprisingly good attack. Most people don't even really consider that as an option, but... Uh, so he gets the Leech Seed recovery, and Nasser decides to swap out, because he doesn't want to take a power whip. Oddly enough, he goes out into a Crocodile, who would also not really want to take a power whip. Maybe, because he's burnt, he thought that it wouldn't be a bad idea, but... Uh, Joey decides that he's going to just swap out his Ferrothorn and he goes out and Tyranitar. And that's, that's more or less just to get the sand back up, I'd assume, because this Tyranitar is not going to be doing anything since he's still asleep. So Joey obviously doesn't like this matchup because he doesn't want his Tyranitar taking a or an Earthquake from this Crocodile. I would have personally just left it in because he's asleep. He's not going to be doing very much, but he 
wants to still use him to take those uh, special hits, I'd assume. So he swaps out into his Fairthorn. His Fairthorn's going to take an Earthquake from this Crooked Isle, and he's going to go down to burn. So that kill's going to go to Politoed as he was the one that burned him. And right here, uh, he decides to go out into his Gyarados, and the Gyarados is able to get off the Intimidate on the Crooked Isle. And if the Crooked Isle's uh, scarfed or banded or whatever, then he's not going to be able to touch this Gyarados. So. Uh, Nasser decides to swap out into his Mega Scizor here, and Mega Scizor takes some more spikes damage, and he's going to take a Waterfall from uh, the Gyarados here. So this hit, uh, Gyarados gets off some pretty solid damage, and he gets buffeted by the Sandstorm, but that's negated by the Leftovers. So uh, right here, he decides to go for a Dragon Dance because he thinks that Nasser is going to be forced to switch out, because I think that Nasser's Mega Scizor would have gone down to another Waterfall there. It would have been pretty close, but Nasser just decides to go for another U-turn. It's not going to do very much because Gyarados resists it, but it does... Uh, respectable amount of damage, especially considering that Gyarados doesn't have a true form of recovery other than his leftovers. So uh, right here Nasser decides to go out into his Crooked Isle, which is almost guaranteeing me the fact that he is Choice Scarf just because the way that he brought it in. This Gyarados is at plus one and he was able to decide who he wanted to bring in since he used U-Turn. So Gyarados is just going to get some more leftovers recovery here and Crooked Isle goes for Rock Slide and so he outsped so that just proves that he was Choice Scarf and he's able to take out this Gyarados. If I'm Joey there, I probably would have swapped out this Gyarados. I'm not sure if he had anything that really wanted to take it. Maybe this Garchomp, this Gar uh, Ground Resist Rock, so that might have been an option for him, but he didn't see it that way and uh, he, he lost his Gyarados. And so he brings in his Garchomp, and his Garchomp is a Mega Garchomp, obviously, because that's what he drafted. And Nasser just decides to swap out his Crooked Isle because his Crooked Isle is scarfed and he's locked into Rock Slide and he goes out into his Politoed and the Politoed is able to initiate his Drizzle, get the rain back up, which is going to get rid of Garchomp's ability to use his uh, Sand Force. So uh, Garchomp's still able to do a considerable amount of damage to his Politoed because again he's not that physically bulky and Mega Garchomp's got an insane attack stat. So his uh, Politoed goes down to another EQ there and Nasser just brings in his Kingdra and this Kingdra is... Um, gonna have the swift swim I assume and he's gonna take some spikes damage but uh, uh, Joey doesn't want the Kingdra being able to take advantage of his swift swim so he just swaps back out and brings in his Tyranitar gets up the sand stream gets rid of the uh, rain and on top of that he's able to take this ice beam like it's absolutely nothing so Nasser decides that he's gonna take uh, swap out his Kingdra after his Kingdra takes some sandstorm damage and he just goes out into a Scizor. Scizor is going to be able to do a huge amount of damage to this Tyranitar if Joey decides to leave it in. He does just trying to wear down that sleep and hope for a wake up. So Joey uh, decides to swap out his Tyranitar here and he brings in his Mega Garchomp and Mega Garchomp is obviously gonna take some some solid damage from this Scizor, but not like he's not gonna be able to get Oshkoda or anything like that. And Nasser just decides to go for a U-turn get some more switch initiative and go into whoever he wants to go into so he brings in his scarf crocodile again and crocodile is going to get hurt by the uh, spikes and he's going to be able to intimidate the mega garchomp it's going to wear him down a little bit well not wear him down but prevent what he can do uh, so here he just goes for a earthquake and the earthquake does a good amount to the garchomp but it's not able to take him out and the garchomp's able to hit right back with an earthquake of his own and take out the crocodile there so Nasser decides to bring in his Hitmonchan, who's going to again take some spikes damage, and Hitmonchan is really just a powerful, powerful Pokemon for Nasser at this point in the season. And Nasser just goes for the safe Mach Punch, because the Mach Punch could take out that Mega Garchomp from the range that he's at, and he's Life Orbed. And so this Hitmonchan is really just able to do a considerable amount of work. And uh, so they're both Forges and Hitmonchan are going to take some uh, Sandstorm damage there, and Forges is going to uh, negate that with his leftovers. So right here, uh, Nasser decides to swap out his Hitmonchan and he goes out into his Amoongus and the Amoongus is really just going to be able to shut down this uh, floor just unless it's carrying Psychic on it and he just goes for Hidden Power. I'm not sure what the Hidden Power is. It it was super effective but it could have been uh, Psychic. I don't think it is because I'm pretty sure floor just gets Psychic. So it could have been HP Fire which would be pretty viable in my opinion. So. Again, Florgis is just going to get his leftovers recovery to negate the sandstorm damage, and Amoongus is going to get his black sludge recovery to negate the uh, sand. So here, uh, Florgis goes for the psychic, and that does a good amount of damage to this Amoongus. So that uh, clearly shows that he's running a weird set on this Florgis, because most people don't run psychic. It's usually Moonblast, Wish, uh, Aromatherapy, and Protect. I'd say that's the most typical set, but. Amoongus hits back with a sludge bomb and he gets a poison, so that's going to be pretty vital because that's really going to hurt what this Florgis is able to do. Uh, Florgis is going to take some damage from that poison and then on top of the sand, and then he's going to get his recovery from the leftovers, but uh, 
Nasser decides that he's just going to swap out his Amoongus here and he goes out into his Kingdra. Uh, the Kingdra is going to take this HP Fire. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to be HP Fire because that's that's no damage at all. So the Sandstorm is going to end at this point and uh, Floor just is going to take some more poison damage after he gets his leftovers recovery. So he's not going to be worn down nearly as quick as he was getting worn down before because the sand's gone. But he's still taking that damage, uh, toxic damage is really racking up. And right here, Nasser goes for Hydro Pump and the Hydro Pump misses. And that really, really hurt him there because he lost his Kingdra to the Moon Blast from Floor just. That's obviously going to be able to take it out. That might even be able to Ochigo. I'd have to get a uh, Calcate, but Floor just has really, really good special attack. And he's stab Moon Blast with base 80 power, or base 90 power. And that's just going to really, really hurt. So. Forge is going to take some more toxic damage, and Nasser just decides to bring his Scizor at this point. Scizor is going to take some uh, spikes damage. It's really just starting to wear him down because he's taking only a waterfall and a bunch of spikes, and it's really just lowering his HP. But he's just going to go for a bullet punch, and he's going to be able to take out that Forge just at this point. So Joey brings in his Alakazam, and that just shows that it's going to be a Sash Alakazam because the Alakazam is going to take that bullet punch from Scizor and it's going to knock him right down to a Sash. But he's able to get a revenge kill with his Shadow Ball. So finally that uh, Mega Scizor is down so he's not able to just come in and U-turn or bullet punch because that's pretty much all he's done with it really. And uh, Nasser almost has this one wrapped up because I'd say just about everything is in Mach Punch range for Sitmonchan. As you can see Alakazam's at 1 HP is obviously going to go down to like, Mach Punch to go down to anything. Uh, so Hitmonchan's going to lose some life orb damage and so he brings in, uh, Joey decides to bring in his Tyranitar. Tyranitar, Tyranitar has been worn down a little bit, he's going to get out that sand again, but uh, Tyranitar really does not want to take probably even a Mach Punch from this range that he's at, but Nasser reveals that he's got Drain Punch on this Hitmonchan. It was a crit, that crit did not matter whatsoever, it's going to take out that Tyranitar 100 times out of 100, and he's just going to pretty much be able to wrap this one up at this point because uh, the only thing that Joey has left is that Garchomp and his Mega Gar Garchomp does not have like hardly any HP. He's got 23 HP and he's not going to want to take this Mach Punch from Hitmonchan at all. And another crit, but another crit that didn't matter. So that's going to wrap up everything from this Game of the Week presentation by the LBA in the Lithio region. Uh, thanks for tuning in guys and I hope that you enjoyed it and we'll be hopefully having some more of these uploads and uh, the next few weeks, I'll be sure to tweet them out on the Lithio BA account or the OBA account, and I'm sure that the Lithio region is going to retweet those. So, thanks again for tuning in, guys. I'll see you next time.